Welcome to the Supercast. I'm your host, Superintendent Anthony Godfrey. What is it like for a teacher working from home during school dismissal in what might be a kitchen turned into a classroom? Today we hear from Jordan School District Teacher of the Year, Rochelle Smith, about teaching during these difficult times and how she is finding success in making learning fun. I also stopped by her virtual classroom and talked to some very bright and animated sixth grade students about their at-home learning experience. We are here with Rochelle Smith, the current reigning teacher of the year in Jordan School District. Uh, she and I have met a number of times and she's a delightful person, a wonderful teacher who is wildly popular among her students and faculty. So I'm really excited to have the chance to talk with her. Uh, just before we started, we were both talking about how nice it is to connect with someone outside of our homes uh, in this uh, very strange time. So I love to do the interviews in person, but these Zoom interviews at least give us a chance to continue with the Supercast. So Rochelle, welcome. It's great to have you. Thank you. I'm really excited. Like I said um, earlier before we were recording, this is my going out. So it's good to connect with people and <laughs> just to see other faces. It's awesome. You miss your kids, I have no doubt. Uh, it's been it's been rough. We see each other as much as we can. Yeah, I have. I, I'm absolutely sure that they're missing you desperately as well. <laughs> Uh, so you're teaching sixth grade this year. Tell me what you love about being a sixth grade teacher. You know, I was a little bit worried. I taught first grade for 11 years and decided to make that jump to sixth grade this year. And I was just a little bit worried because my heart was really in first grade, but I knew that, you know, I had a calling to do something else as well. So really, they surprised me. The kids are awesome. They laugh at my jokes first of all i am the smartest funniest person in that room and <laughs> they really make you feel loved so they're not much different in that way in first graders i feel like first graders come in and they already love you you're their teacher but you have to work a little bit harder with sixth graders and i feel like i won them over and then yeah and then this happened so i feel like we're incomplete but we're we're still working on it you know with our zoom classes and everything like that you're incomplete. That's a really good way of putting it. There's a real cycle to the year. Each month feels different. And going through the year, you grow together. They get to know every outfit you own. You get <laughs> to know everything about them. And that is missing. That's a big missing piece. And I'd almost rather have a chunk in the middle of the year and get the beginning and end than have the year end and not be able to connect. Yeah, I mean that I remember the day so vividly. It seems like it seems like it was forever ago, but it was just, I mean, six weeks ago. Um, one of my students said to me before we were leaving for that day, Hey Mrs. Smith, like I probably won't see you for a long time. And I was like, What are you talking about? I will see you on Monday. We have another week before we go off track. And he said, No, I'm pretty sure we won't be in school. And lo and behold, two hours later, you know, Governor Herbert said we would be I'm doing online school. So he was right. He predicted the future. I've got to shout that out for him. But, you know, that end of the year is really special in a lot of ways. And I was excited to experience it in sixth grade for the first time. They're going to middle school. It's this big transition year. But I think, like, the most important thing is that we're just making it work. And, and they all sort of understand that, I mean, this is going to be epic in their in their whole lifespan. So we're we're going to do what we can to make it as memorable as possible. I think that's well said. It's a unifying event. It's and we don't have many of those, and it's one where everyone will remember how old they were and what they went mm -hmm. through and what their particular experience was. And I am very impressed that he predicted that because <laughs> after all this happened, I looked back and I thought, what were we thinking? Why didn't we say goodbye? Didn't you uh. have some sense that any moment this could be happening? And it's very interesting. It's poignant that he would. I do sort that. of got a little annoyed with him, though. So I had to apologize later <laughs> because I was like, I had a student teacher as well. And so he was like, bye, I'll never see you again, Miss Balls, and saying goodbye to our student teacher. And I was like, <laughs> you are going to make her sad. You're going to see her on Monday. And so I sort of got annoyed. But. I have since then apologized and tell, told him that he is the, he's the, he's the know-all. 
Well, I would be interested in knowing what stocks he thinks uh, are going to do <laughs> and if there are Seriously. any in particular that I ought to invest in. He's a great kid. <laughs> With the school dismissal and parents having to fill in for teachers in many ways and manage learning at home, what advice do you have for parents who find themselves in that circumstance? That's a great question. I think being flexible. Teachers are very flexible. Parents are very flexible. They already know how to do this. You know, it's all about giving yourself a little bit of grace and knowing that you're not going to follow a rigid schedule. You're not going to even get everything finished. It's about that relationship that you have with your child. That's the utmost important, even importance. Even when I have parents reach out to me and say, you know, my child doesn't, especially when I taught first grade, my child doesn't want to do their homework. What do I do? They're crying. They, you know, they don't want to do this. They don't want to do that. And my advice is always your relationship comes first. So make sure that you are nurturing that relationship and their mental health before anything else. And then as always, you know, you might need a little bit of a schedule, especially for the sixth graders. They need a little bit of schedule. They sort of thrive on it. They cringe when they have to come back after a holiday, but they always love it because they're like, thank you. You got me out of bed. I'm dressed. I'm ready for the day. So I think a little bit of a schedule, but not being too rigid is advice that I would give parents in the situation right now. I, I am interested in more of the comparison between first graders and sixth graders. It really does make sense. The first graders love you simply because you're their teacher. Sixth graders take a little more converting. I taught eighth graders and juniors, and there's no less connection as they get older, but there is more of a warming up period. Yeah, I think in any teacher, any teacher knows that relationships matter over everything. Um, beyond what you teach, beyond what you do, the relationships that you have with those kids are really what matters. And, you know, sixth graders are, they're still kids. And I had to learn that really as I was teaching it because um, they still love the things that first graders love. I mean, they love stickers and they love high fives and they love hugs and they, you know, the, all those sort of things they love, but then they also have this very mature side where, you know, they are starting to go through some real world problems that they might need help, might need help navigating. And not that first graders don't go through that, but their life experiences kind of catch up with them. And so I think that that just relationship building is, is, is more in depth than it is on, in a first grade level. They, my sixth graders would tell me things that you know, they might not feel comfortable telling someone else. And so I felt that connection with them that I didn't really feel um, with first graders. Yeah, I, I like the way you describe that. And I'm, I'm really impressed just that you wanted to take on the challenge, that you decided there's something more for me. I need to try what's next rather than staying where you were comfortable. What are some things that you've learned about yourself in teaching? by taking this leap and teaching kids that are much older? The first thing I learned was that I was not the smartest person in the classroom. And <laughs> there are many students in my class that were smarter than me and knew more than me. And I learned a lot every day. And really, the biggest thing was just taking it a day at a time. I couldn't go and learn all of that curriculum. It had been so long since I've ever even looked at something like that. And so I just, I really just took it a day at a time and leaned on my teammates and, and the students as well. And I was not ever um, afraid of saying, you guys, I don't know the answer to that. I was okay making mistakes. And I think that's important as a teacher to, you don't have to always be the boss or, you know, the, the queen as sometimes I get called, but um, <laughs> I, it's just important to, you know, admit your faults. And, and I took it one day at a time and still I'm learning every day. Uh, I think that it's interesting you say that they're smarter than you. I remember when I was a student teacher, the principal at the school where we were working came in to talk with us, and he said, just remember, some of these kids are smarter than you. You may have more life experience, but they're smarter than you. Treat them that way. Treat them with respect. And that stayed with me, and it's obvious that that's what you do. I also... I. You know, I went and got my master's because maybe I thought I would go into some sort of administrative position. And my former principal told me before he retired, you know, if you go into administration, just know that your faculty, they're, they're very smart and they're such good assets 
to the community. And he said, you can take that to the community and to the school. You can take that in your sixth grade classroom and utilize that as well. So I kind of have that mentality is I don't always have to be, you know, giving the information the students can teach as well. And I think that if I ever do become an administrator, that's such a good skill. I never felt below, you know, when he was talking to me, I always wanted to know what my opinion was. And so that transferred over into my classroom. Well, it's impressive when you are open and ready to learn from people of any age and any level of experience. Yeah. It's a great way to approach things. Now, I know that besides being a great teacher, you also do some things on the side that help share with others some of the things that you've learned. Can you tell me some of the things that you're doing and that you've done to share your experience and your expertise? Yeah, I think I just figured that I really like to be a teacher. I couldn't even come up with a hobby that didn't involve teaching. Um, so <laughs> I I started a blog, um, a teaching blog, oh, 10 years ago, nine years ago, just to share my teaching ideas out there with other teachers who might be in a similar situation as me. Where I was sort of a new teacher and wanted ideas out there online. And that was the big deal. There weren't a lot of teaching ideas online. Um, and so... I started that with a friend of mine and it kind of molded into me creating lessons and ideas and activities that other teachers could use in their classroom. And then it snowballed into me presenting at conferences and sharing those ideas person to person at national conferences around the United States. So I've had a really great opportunity, not just teaching students, but teaching teachers, which also impacts students. It's been eye opening and I've learned a lot in this, and that's sort of what I've taken away from my whole experience um, as a teacher, social media blogger, is that um, I'm a lifelong learner, and I've learned through the process as well. I haven't just taught teachers, and I haven't just taught students. If someone wanted to access your blog, where would they find you? Um, whattheteacherwantsblog.com. Whattheteacherwantsblog.com. And where that's, did that name come that's from? That's Um. It was what this teacher wanted. Like it was sort of what, you know how people always say, you love your spouse how you want to be loved. So I was, I was putting out the information that I wanted put out there, um, that I wanted to soak in. And so I, you know, started writing this blog and creating these ideas, but also searching out other blogs and getting ideas from those teachers as well. So it's sort of what the teacher wants. That's a that's a long time to keep that up. I can't yeah. wait to check it out. That's awesome. What was it that made you want to become a teacher? Um, I had a first grade teacher that I really loved, and I was that I was the student in class that was the child that wherever you moved them, they talked to whoever you moved them by. That was me. <laughs> so I have many of those students in my class currently, and I can't I. You know, you can't hate them for that. They are me and I am them. So she just embraced that about me. All of my other teachers kind of tried to stifle that and shush me. And she was like, you're, you know, you're a great student. You know, and she would talk to my mom and just lift me up instead of trying to quiet me down. And I just thought, I want to be that type of teacher that she would always say warm fuzzies. I want to be that type of teacher that gives warm fuzzies. So she lifted you up instead of quieting you down. That is such a perfect way of explaining what great teachers do yes, and what you do. You find the best in people, you draw that out, and you make the most of that, and you help emphasize that. And it sounds like you're equally skilled at doing that for adults as well as kids. I, I try. I, thank you. <laughs> so what's next for you? Are you teaching sixth grade next year? I am teaching sixth grade next year. My husband and I are expecting our first baby. And so I'm still planning on coming. Yeah, thank you. I'm still planning on coming back, teaching full time um, and being a mom as well. Well, congratulations. That's thank fantastic. You. Well, we're very lucky to have you at Black Ridge. Your students are very lucky to have you. And I'm really glad that you're in Jordan School District. Thank you, Dr. Godfrey. I love it here. I tell everyone to come here. My Try to grab my every student teacher I ever get. Come work at Jordan. It's the best. Stay with us. We're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, a virtual visit with Miss Smith's sixth grade class. I'm Stephen Hall 
Director of Jordan Education Foundation. In today's challenging and uncertain times, it is more important than ever before to support one another. Here at the Jordan Education Foundation, we invite you to join us in making sure children are not going hungry. Your $10 donation to the foundation will help us feed one student for a weekend when food and meals may be very scarce for some. With food and hygiene supplies in the principal's pantries at Jordan School Districts being depleted and in higher demand than ever before, every financial contribution made will help us to keep the pantries filled for students who would otherwise go without. The Jordan Education Foundation exists due to the generosity of people who care about kids. If you would like to donate to help children from going hungry, please visit jordaneducationfoundation.org or contact the foundation at 801-567-8125. Thank you. Together we can make a difference. Welcome back. We're now visiting Ms. Smith's virtual sixth grade class. Tell me, tell me how things changed for you once you had to learn from home and what you think of it. Um, I'm just really sad because end of the year is always the when the good stuff is. And I mean, online learning, it isn't too bad because I can go at my own pace, but I'm just really sad about the stuff that I'm not going to get to do at the end of the year. Yeah, we're, we're all sad for everybody who's missing out on those important end of year activities. Kayla, what are your thoughts about learning from home now? I really don't like it because I don't get to see any of my classmates and I don't get to see Miss Smith and I don't get a handshake at the beginning or anything. You miss all of that. Yeah, we, we're all missing that. I think I like online school just a little more than regular, but yeah. What do you like about online school, Luke? Um, you just, you pretty much have like the whole day if you finish it fast. So you can work at your own pace. I'm sort of liking online school a bit because you can you don't have to like look good, you know. And <laughs> who's been wearing the same sweatpants for the past two weeks? Me. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you for saying what we're all thinking, Isabel. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> OK, how do you feel about the fact that you, the next time you go to school, you'll be in seventh grade. It's a scary feeling, not gonna lie. Con Connor's a little spooked, and I think that's probably true I for mean, everybody. I mean, I don't have the best memory, so it's gonna be hard to remember my locker combination. So that's gonna suck. You can write it on your hand. You know, I was a middle school principal, and remembering locker combination is one of the main stresses of being in middle school, but <laughs> I have confidence you can do it. It's just, uh, yeah, write it down. Um, it's kind of like scary. Like I don't, I don't know if I'm really ready to like have all those classes and remember where they are. And like Connor said, remember my locker combination. Well, the the cool thing about uh, middle school is they have the pizza line in the cafeteria every day. So. <laughs> So there's that. Okay, other, other Is the pizza good? Are, the pizza's really good. Yes. Okay. I'm honestly kind of excited because I never got to do many plays and I'll get to do a ton of plays. And I okay. really love acting. There will be some good opportunities going forward. Uh, what's it like to be in Ms. Smith's class? Tyson. All right, Tyson. Um, it's pretty fun and Sometimes she does stuff you don't expect. Like when you ask her to do something, sometimes she'll actually say yes when you don't expect it. Like what have you asked her to do that she uh, did? Like one time we asked her if we could pull another kerplunk and she said yes. Another kerplunk? What's a kerplunk? It's like this thing of marbles and when you pull a thing, the marbles fall and when we get all the marbles, we get a party. That's and something awesome. happened to me. Well, can we just pull another one just because? And they were expecting to be like, absolutely not. And I just did because we got to pull on our toes. <laughs> so she's full of surprises, Tyson. Is that fair to say? Yes. Isabel, you didn't raise your hand, but tell me, what's it like in Miss Smith's class? Uh, Miss Smith's very laid back and like she's not too strict about like 
when we have to get our science done and if it's like a little bit late like it's not the end of the world <laughs> so it's more about learning than it is about timing yep okay awesome who else wants to tell me a little bit about miss smith's class okay lena um um sometimes we'll like have a theme for the day like what one time there was like a a day where it was like boot camp and we like did challenges to like earn dog tags and stuff so what were some of the challenges well we like did um like assignments and like we did like we did like push-ups too and jumping jacks well connor has his dog tags right there that's yeah, fantastic they don't remember the assignment necessarily that i taught them but they do remember the boot camp so i guess i i'll bet they remember the assignment them. It was grammar. We did grammar boot camp. Ooh, I love grammar. If you were going to tell a fifth grade student who knew they were coming into Miss Smith's class next year, what would you tell them? Be prepared for some fun. Be prepared for some fun. Thank what you, Tyler. Be prepared. honest. Be honest. Why is that, Connor? That's really all she cares about. <laughs> she wants you to be honest. Yeah. That's a you really good thing. Yeah. Be yourself. Don't expect don't expect anything because it's always the opposite of what you would expect. <laughs> That's good, Kizzy. So I guess she has your attention. Is that fair to say? Yeah. I see lots of heads nodding. <laughs> How do you think Ms. Smith feels about you? Um, probably thinks we're crazy, but also awesome. <laughs> crazy, but also awesome. I would agree. Malia, what do you think she thinks about you guys? Um, I'm sure she like um, loves us and, she, and hopefully she misses us when we leave to middle school. <laughs> I, I missed you. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe in a video or two, I've said I missed you. What will you remember most about being in Miss Smith's class this year? And it can be before closure or after closure. Halloween will never be the same because like, she just makes Halloween the best and uh, just had a really fun year. That's awesome. I'll remember how good of a teacher you were. Um, uh, it, I feel like Miss Smith, like, made reading fun. I remember just vibing in Miss Smith's class in the mornings and then after lunch. <laughs> All day. Well, school got closed this year. Um, and well, we just did a bunch of like random and totally unexpected things that, um, yeah, like you don't forget those things. Kenzie, are you there? Yeah, sorry. My brother just stormed in and asked me to print a coloring page, so. Okay. <laughs> but, um, what I'll probably remember most is when we got to pull up car plump, we would, or plug, we would drum roll, and it was like Elsa calling. It would call right back to us. Kids in the other classes would drum roll right back. Oh, so when you drum rolled, the others, the other classes would hear it and join in. Yeah, and the, wow, the downstairs the class always thought there was like some sort of earthquake <laughs> or something going on because we were a little bit loud. So, thank you so thank much. You. This was great. <laughs> I could talk to you all day, but I will not take up the rest of your day. Can you guys kind of give a shout out for Miss Smith? Kind of give me a nice applause for Miss Smith because she's awesome. Shout out! Woo! <laughs> Woo! <laughs>